The Ryzen X 3D range of CPUs have earned their place in gamers' hearts since the days of Zen 3. Today's 8-core Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and the previous 5800X 3D are fan favourites, and people love 3D Vcash so much they even rushed out to buy the 6-core version on the old AM4 socket. Alas, there hasn't been one released on the new platform yet. But what if I told you you could get one right now? Just not how you'd expect. AMD's 3D Vcash technology was a literal game changer. L3 Cache has been known to benefit gaming performance for a while, but only in recent years has it been given the attention it deserves. Due to memory density limitations, regular L3 Cache can only get so big before you need a physically larger CPU to fit it all on. However, by stacking cache upwards, AMD have been able to cram an insane amount onto regular sized processors, the poster child for 3D Vcache this generation has been the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, featuring 8 cores on a single CCD with 32MB of regular L3 cache and 64MB of stacked cache shared between all 8 cores. The Ryzen 9 7900X 3D offers a slightly different proposition. It has two CCDs with 6 cores on each, each CCD has 32 megabytes of regular L3 cache, but only one has access to the additional 64 megabyte 3 dv cache. Now, I know I've just said cache a lot of times, and it's probably lost all meaning, so let me put it another way. The 7900X3D is effectively two 6-core CPUs on one chip, one of them having significantly more gaming performance than the other. During regular computing, these two CPUs act pretty much as one, giving you all the benefits of a 12-core CPU when you need it. When gaming, however, one of those two 6-core CPUs is pushed into the background, meaning that, for gamers at least, you're now effectively using a Ryzen 5 7600X 3D, a 6-core CPU which doesn't and may never really exist. On the one hand, this sounds great, almost as good in fact as the much beloved 7800X 3D. The downside is, this almost as good gaming CPU actually costs more, so people of a gaming purist mindset won't see the value in it. Meanwhile, for workloads that use more cores and don't care so much about cache, the X3D part can be a detriment. Because of the extra cache, half of the cores don't clock as high as the other half. And again, the 7900X3D costs more than a regular 7900X. Whether you're a pure gamer or a pure creator, this particular Ryzen 9 appears to fall short. Now, if you're like me, and you want something that's great for both gaming and productivity, then maybe this seems like a good idea. Not quite the best of both worlds, that would be the 16-core Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, but a pretty decent compromise. If you're focused on one specific use case, however, and you don't know all this ahead of time, you might find yourself paying more for a lesser CPU. Even somewhat discounted from its launch price, the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D is £400. It's not exactly a budget chip, it's not about to be replaced for at least a few more months when the 9000 series X 3D chips launch, so I guess you're wondering what it's doing on my channel. Well, it was sent to me by Scan Computers, a UK PC retailer who is currently running bundle deals on AMD CPUs, GPUs and compatible motherboards. If you're in the UK and looking for a great deal, check out the link in the video's description. Up until the 7th of July 2024, the 7900X 3D is available in a bundle with an ASUS Strix X670EF motherboard and Sapphire Pulse RX 7900XT, and these are the components I'm going to be testing the CPU with today. I'm also using a Thermorite Phantom Spirit 120 dual tower cooler with 7 heat pipes, and for memory I'm using a Corsair Vengeance 32GB kit of DDR5 6000 CR30 tuned with Buildzoi's Easy Hynix timings. 
I've updated the BIOS on the Strix, installed the latest X670E chipset drivers, and set power management to balanced, which is all necessary in order to ensure the right cores are being loaded up in-game. As one of the more cache-sensitive games I know of, and one that absolutely adores Team Red's last two generations of CPUs, I had some high expectations for Valorant. The near 700 FPS average, the 1% lows that are higher than most games averages, and even the 0.1% lows, all are extremely impressive, if somewhat extravagant, results. It's also true to say that the Ryzen 5 7500F, the CPU I use in my GPU testing rig, is less than 10% behind this and costs less than half as much. I'm giving Fortnite one last chance to impress me, and while the first couple of runs were plagued with the same poor frame pacing that made me rage quit a few weeks ago, after a while they started to smooth out a little. By my third game, things had completely settled down, and the 7900X3D really had a chance to shine, with an average FPS in excess of 570. Like Valorant, Counter-Strike 2 doesn't really make a case for the 7900X3D either. The much cheaper 6-core, with its more conventional cache, could hit 365 FPS, while this chip only managed to equal it. It's not a bad result outside of that context, but it's not what I expected to see from the Ryzen 9 with its much vaunted 3DV cache. Call of Duty Warzone is a win for the 7900X3D, but perhaps not the most resounding one. With an average of around 230 FPS, it's about 15% better than the Ryzen 5, which doesn't do much to justify a roughly 150% price difference. That being said, the 7800X3D still costs double the 7500F, and although I haven't had the opportunity to test the 8-core yet, I can't imagine it will hit 400 FPS either. Well, this is a big day for me. I don't think I've ever seen New Atlantis in Starfield run at over 100 FPS before. The next best result I've seen was from the Ryzen 5 7500F. That CPU was tested with the older RX 6900 XT, but at 720p low it managed 99 FPS, so that's still a small but significant win for the X3D. It doesn't iron out all the stutters, however, which is unfortunately more of an indictment of Bethesda's programming than it is of any particular CPUs. So far, none of the CPUs I've tested in Cyberpunk could drive a 144Hz monitor to its limits, and yet the 7900X3D can push an average of 148 with 1% lows of 85. Adding ray tracing puts a little more pressure on the CPU, and unfortunately, even at FSR Ultra Performance, the RX 7900XT can't quite keep up. I measured an average of 102 FPS with Ultra RT, though there's probably at least a few more frames of leeway in there if you have a GPU that can keep up. It's not the only title where the 7900X3D finds itself a little held back by my 7900XT either. The Last of Us is heavily utilising the GPU at 1080p high, so while the game is reaching 147 FPS, it can potentially go even higher. Dropping quality to low and adding the maximum amount of FSR puts as much load onto the CPU as possible and brings that average up to 168 FPS. Microsoft Flight Sim is due for an update soon, with a 2024 iteration that will no doubt increase visual fidelity even further. For the time being, the 2020 version is actually very much CPU-bound when using the high-end quality preset, even at 1440p, 
and the 7900X 3D beats any other CPU I've tested by a wide margin. At 116 FPS on average, this is some 30% better than the next best desktop CPU I've tested. I keep Dragon's Dogma 2 on the benchmark roster purely out of academic interest. Most CPUs continue to struggle with this one, and unless there's some patch that fixes everything, it's still going to be a matter of finding a CPU with enough power to brute force it. In truth, this chip still isn't quite there, but it's the closest I've tried yet. The average of 90 FPS is about 10% better than the Ryzen 5, and would certainly seem to be playable enough but 1% lows are below 60, and there are enough frame time spikes that the 0.1s are closer to 30 FPS. For productivity, as with the synthetics, there's a bit of a weak point in my comparison charts. The 7900X 3D stands well clear at the top because, well, I haven't tested anything like it before. The H.264 render in DaVinci Resolve completes in 7.5 minutes, over 4 minutes faster than the next nearest desktop CPU I've tested, but that CPU is the Ryzen 7 5700X from my current editing PC. The Ryzen 9 is a generation newer, has 50% more threads and DDR5 RAM. It damn well better be better. The Blender test likewise leaves the Ryzen 9 a country mile ahead of the competition. The 12-core Zen 4 chip finishes twice as fast as the 6-core Zen 4 chip. Shocking. Hopefully in the coming weeks and months I'll be able to build up some more relevant comparison numbers, but for the time being, I don't really have much to say. Okay, so I'll admit it, my humble little channel mainly focuses on cheaper, older stuff, so I don't really have a lot of points of reference for the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D. Many of the best CPUs I've tested so far have been in mini PCs, and so haven't had enough GPU horsepower to really leverage the processor in games. I know from other people's reviews that this isn't a particularly well-regarded CPU. It underperforms the 7800X 3D in gaming, and the regular 7900X in productivity, so the fact that it costs more than either is a bit galling. If Scan Computers hadn't sent it to me, I probably wouldn't have bought it for myself. My main use cases are in DaVinci Resolve and Photoshop, neither of which majorly benefit from the extra cash. In fact, I'm of the opinion that even for most types of gaming, the X3D chips are kinda overkill. You certainly don't need one if you're rocking a mid-tier graphics card, and I'd say these chips are mainly for people who like to see the biggest possible numbers and have deep enough pockets to get them. At least, I would say that if it weren't for certain unoptim- uh, very demanding games like Dragon's Dogma 2. The 7900X 3D clearly isn't for the same audience as the 7800X 3D. It's for someone who regularly finds themselves using their PC for both highly demanding productivity applications as well as the current raft of CPU intensive AAA games, and can't really decide which of the two is more important. Well, when I put it like that, it actually sums me up pretty perfectly. The bundle scan sent to me is therefore going to become the basis of my new editing PC, and will also hopefully offer enough performance for me to finally finish Jedi Survivor with ray tracing enabled. The 7900X 3D won't be replacing the 7500F in my GPU test rig, partly because I want to continue the moderately priced gaming PC shtick, but mainly because I don't think I could tolerate all the comments about how I should use the 7800X 3D instead. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.